every good thing starts out small and then grows to a point where everyone seems to love it. <gasps> That's what she said. And the MLS is no different. Major League Soccer has started with 10 clubs all the way back in 1996 and now is all the way up to 28, soon to be 29, and then 30 clubs. So the 19 clubs who have joined MLS over the years, you look at them and you start to say, okay, who is better than who? And that's exactly what we're here to do today. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rank every expansion MLS club and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do it in a little bit of a tier list style. All right, so looking at this list, we've got the best of the best and that is saved for whatever club I think is the best expansion MLS club of all time going down from there, made their mark. These are the clubs that have made their mark in the league throughout the years, followed up by the solid clubs, then the teams who have just done the job, then the not so good clubs, the atrocious clubs, and the last category, I think you'll figure out who that's saved for. So let's go ahead and just get started. The very first club that joined MLS, joined the 10 clubs that were already in the league was Real Salt Lake. They joined alongside the club that shall not be named and they have made the playoffs more than they've missed the playoffs. 17 seasons in, in the MLS, 11 playoff appearances, and back in 2009, they won the MLS Cup. So overall, RSL, a team that really hasn't dazzled, but hey, they have an MLS Cup to their name and they're above average, so they're going right into that solid category. Moving on, we have the next expansion club, the Houston Dynamo, and they came in and they hit the league hard back-to-back -back MLS cups in the first two seasons the Dynamo came into the league and yes you could say the expansion rules might have been in their favor a little bit but hey they won the MLS Cup those two years and then in 2011 and 2012 they went to the MLS Cup final lost both of those years but four appearances in their first six years in the MLS so so far, things looking really good. Probably a team you'd put into the category of made their mark. However, they've just been so poor in the last 10 years, only making the playoffs twice since that 2012 MLS Cup run. They really just haven't kept up with the league, and that's why I dropped them to solid. Man, uh, trying to stop Joe for getting himself into further trouble. So, so far, we've got two teams in the solid category, and we will move on to our next club, Toronto FC. Will they fall in the same category? Well, they found it tough when they first joined the league. In fact, they missed the playoffs the first eight seasons in the MLS. However, an MLS Cup run in 2016, a record-breaking season in 2017, and another great run in 2019, that has to put them up into that category of made their mark. And you know what, Toronto fans? If it wasn't for that one Stefan Fry save, you might just be at the top. Moving on to the next team we've got, it's the Philadelphia Union, a team who has made the playoffs exactly half of the amount of times that they have been in the league. And on top of that, never made an MLS Cup. Not looking great, but they did win a supporter shield in 2020. And because of that, the fact that they make the playoffs around half the time, they're gonna go into the category of they have done the job. Nothing special but it's enough for me. Now moving on to the Portland Timbers. And honestly, this team has brought more than just good play to MLS. They have a great atmosphere in their stadium and honestly, one of the coolest traditions after they score a goal with Timber Joey. Every time one of the players scores, I go out there and cut a slice off of it, parade it around the stadium, and then at the end of the game, give it to the, the player who scored as a trophy for his goal. And on top of that, they have won an MLS Cup. They have made two more appearances. In fact, last year, they were the runners up. So in my eyes, this team has astoundingly made their mark in MLS. In fact, so much so, I'm putting them in second place. Big Brother Portland and Daddy Seattle are dominating the Pacific Northwest. And Sad little Vancouver has not passed the quarterfinals of the MLS Cup playoffs. This team has really never found themselves and honestly has never had a season where you feel like they could be a favorite. So they're the first team that's gonna fall into the not good enough category. Now on to Montreal. They used to be called the Impact and now their only impact is missing the playoffs. Oh, a hey, hey, get it? This guy impact, imp play on words there. Okay, okay, bad jokes aside, Montreal has never made it past the MLS Cup semifinals, never made it to the finals, so overall, 
I've got to say not good enough in Canada once again. Now all the way up to 2015 where we have a new expansion club in New York City, this time actually in New York for once. And might I add, reigning MLS Cup champions NYCFC. I think that's all I have to say. Six straight years of making the playoffs topped off with an MLS Cup trophy. I mean, that's enough for me. They're going in the solid category. And let's be honest, if they didn't play in a baseball stadium, they might be in the made their mark category. <laughs> and now the not so good edition of 2015, Orlando City. They've made the playoffs just twice, both in the last two years. But I will say, if there is a tier list for the most clowny things that have happened in MLS, Orlando might just be at the top. I mean, they had the most insane shootout I've ever seen in MLS history, and Schlegel will now go down as an MLS Cup legend. They also finished second in a Mickey Mouse Cup, so if that doesn't scream we're the best, I don't know what does. But in all reality, this team has not been so good. Here we go, back to a team with silverware, Atlanta United. A 2018 MLS Cup, a second place finish in the Eastern Conference in just their five years being in the league, I mean, it's safe to say that they have made their mark on MLS. It's very nice. And not only that, they have garnered one of the biggest followings in Major League Soccer, getting some of the biggest crowds on a consistent basis in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Now, in that same period of time, Minnesota United have not really done much other than crash out of the playoffs in their best chance to go to an MLS Cup in 2020. However, that semifinal thriller against Seattle and three playoff appearances in five years, this Minnesota team really does go into the done the job category. Uh-oh, here we go. Chivas USA, the team that I didn't want to mention earlier, the expansion club back when Real Salt Lake joined the league. One of the saddest stories in MLS joining in 2005 horribly owned and disbanding just nine years later. Easily the worst expansion club. Everyone knows where they fall on this list. However, the one upside they do have is that new owners for Chivas gave way to the next club that we have, and that is LAFC. And to be honest, LAFC are one of the best branded teams in the league and also probably one of the most exciting teams to follow. They captured a supporter shield in just their second season, all the while breaking an MLS points record. And however much you want to hate the flashiest team in MLS, they're here to stay, and they're probably gonna be good for a long time. So that strong impact puts them in the solid category. On to the next club. You've all been waiting for it. The team that goes at the very top of this list, it's FC Cincinnati. Three years in MLS, three straight titles, and yes, I'm talking about wooden spoon titles. Yes, the wooden spoon meaning they finished dead last in the three seasons they've been in Major League Soccer. So instantly they go in the atrocious category, but I'm gonna be honest, I, I kinda wanna push them as close to Chivas USA as I possibly can, but they're still a team sadly, so they can't go quite that low. We can settle them at the bottom of atrocious. On to David Beckham's baby, Inter Miami, the team that tried to cheat to get better. And I mean, everything about this team has been a disaster. The only real achievement they have is making the playoffs in a year where 10 teams in their conference made the playoffs. So almost everyone did. And then they quickly got knocked out. That's some atrocious behavior by Inter Miami. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. In that same year, Nashville was added as well. Back-to-back -back playoff appearances in their first two seasons and a third place finish in the Eastern Conference last year I mean, they have clearly done the job. And now, if we weren't already in the small sample sizes, we're getting into an even smaller sample size, Austin FC. And the one season from Austin was terrible. It was not good at all. However, they've looked better since then, but because of that bad start, they can't go very high. Their stadium is great, and the atmosphere is really, really good there, so I'm gonna sneak them up into the not so good category. And finally, Charlotte FC. I mean, talk about a small sample size. They are just starting their inaugural season in the MLS, so I'm not gonna be too harsh. But since so far they've looked good, they haven't really done anything wrong, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the done the job category. All right, and before I forget about them like I almost did, the Chicago Fire. Now the Fire came into the league and did the same thing the Dynamo did. They won it their first season and then finished runners up in 2000 and 2003. But since then, they really have not done a lot. They made the playoffs in 2012 and 2017, but those are the only two times they made the playoffs in the last 11 seasons. So because they haven't kept up with the league, 
I think they're gonna have to fall into the not so good category. Sorry, Chicago. Now, who could it be? Who is the team at the top of the table? You probably figured out who it is by now. It's the Seattle Sounders. And this team is just the poster child for what it takes to be an expansion club in MLS. 13 seasons in the MLS, and they have not missed the playoffs once. Two MLS Cups in that time, four finals appearances. I mean, they have done everything right since joining MLS. They're probably the most talented team in MLS right now, and certainly had the biggest impact. They are the best of the best. And there it is, the tier list complete. Let me know what you think, because I really like this, the way it's balanced four teams in those four categories, couple outliers here and there, but overall, I really like it. Leave a comment down below if there's something else that you would change, or if you just have a comment to leave about this video, I really appreciate every single one. And if you have not already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe if you're new, because that helps me out so I can continue to make content like this that I enjoy, hopefully you enjoy as well. And with that, Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.